Restoring the Large Class to Restoration by Dr. Mark Gottlieb. My good friend and colleague, Dr. Patrick Retzer, the inventor of the Raptor Burst, said to me one day, Mark, if you can find a solution for that large class to restoration, that missing cusp, you'd have a home run. I said to Pat, I'd start thinking outside the box and try to come up with a solution for him. This is a large class two restoration. The issue is not how to restore the tooth, but it's how to seal off that, that gingival floor and to obtain a flossible contact. The simple, very conservative class two is very easy. You can pre-wedge or wedge with a standard wedge, place a matrix band and separating ring, and achieve anatomically correct contours and a flossible contact. The only issue I found with the simple conservative class two is tooth sensitivity. So by using a glutaraldehyde and hemol solution like microprime G, it seems to eliminate that problem. The patient who presents with that black bicuspid seems to be the real challenge. We've got a tooth number four that's black from a large existing amalgam with overhangs. And what we want to try to achieve is we want to try to achieve anatomic contours and tight flossible contacts. So one day I'm cleaning up cement on a patient. And as I take a scale into the cement, I realize that this big chunk of cement really looks like an anatomic wedge that's placed from the buccal and lingual. Then a light bulb went off in my head saying that would make a really nice anatomic wedge that would prevent the matrix band from being crushed in that wide open box of that missing cusp. So I hired an engineer, showed him all the existing wedge systems that are out there to design a new wedge, a new anatomically correct wedge wasn't really happy with the first design, so we went back and reinforced it, came up with a new design, which really wasn't what I had in mind. I went back to the drawing board, placed a sycamore wedge between some, some Typodon teeth with some cold cure acrylic, and made the first truly anatomic wedge. One of the issues you have with using separating rings is on short clinical teeth, or teeth that are conical in shape, is the separating rings seem to pop out of the mouth. By designing a slot or a wedge across the back of the, the wedge, you now have a way of securing that separating ring from, from flying off or popping out of the mouth. By taking a Dappen dish and some cold cure acrylic, I made up some really crude primitive wedges for me to try in the mouth. I sent those wedges off to a scanner and they were scanned into a CAD CAM image and we now had our initial drawings of the ABC or the Absolute Best Contact Wedge. The second version was close, but I wanted to deepen the groove on the back, flatten out the one side, and shorten the wedge part of the wedge. All we needed now were some SLAs or stereolithograph prototypes and the patient. So the first patient who walked in with a fractured amalgam had a fractured amalgam in tooth number 30 with a little bit of recurrent decay on the distal. And when I was able to remove the amalgam, you'll notice we have a wide open box. I'll take my stereolithograph of my prototype. I'll modify the wing area or the wedge area to modify it for the, for the uh, rubber dam clamp and to broaden the contact area. So by placing them on the buccal and lingual just like the cement, I'm able to seal off and secure the gingival floor, yet support the matrix band so when I place my separating ring, it doesn't crush the matrix band into the box, dictating the shape of my tooth. I'll use small incremental fills of two millimeters with a light for about 20 seconds. Once it's cured, I'll remove my separating rings and bands, and you can see we have a nice, broad, anatomic contour. Now I'm starting to see the light, and I'm very excited about my next patient. My next patient walks in with a fractured lingual cusp. In this case, I've got the smallest size sycamore wedge that I could try to jam between the bicuspid and the cuspid. What I'll do is I'll take my SLA, my prototype, I'll modify it to make room for the rubber dam clamp, and I want it to rest on the cingulum area, not on the papilla. What this does, it allows me to place a separating ring in an area where a separating ring would not fit because the contact area is too narrow and I wouldn't get the separation of the pressure that I needed from my ring system. And what we achieve is a nice, broad, flossible contact. Every day, patients walk in with fractured or cracked teeth. This is a tooth that's got a fractured mesial buccal cusp. And the issue is, is that when the, the fracture is removed or the old amalgam is removed, by placing a separating ring, it crushes that matrix band into the box. By placing the ABC wedge on the buccal and lingual, we can now secure that, that wedge or we can secure the, the missing cusp, burnish the matrix band against the wedge, place our separating ring, and we get a truly anatomic broad contour. The wedge themselves are very simple in design. They come on stalks of 12 and they're available in extra small, small, medium, and large, and available in left and right contours. Using a pair of rights or a pair of lefts together, they slide or they swedge past each other, sealing off the gingival floor and taking on the shape of the tooth. 
Once in a while, the wedge may be a little bit too long and sticks up past the line angle of the buckle of the lingual. And what I may need to do is shorten the, the tip of the wedge where it interferes against the, the wing part of the wedge. The wedges are truly anatomically correct. They're curved to accommodate the gingival floor of the teeth. The problem we have is when we're missing a cusp. When you're missing a cusp like you see here on the mesiolingual cusp, by placing the matrix band in the separating ring, it takes on the shape of the separating ring and seems to be crushed into the box. By placing the wedges on the buccal and lingual, it now supports the matrix band. You could burnish that band against the wedge, place your separating ring, and you get true separation and anatomic contours. We need to keep in mind that the tooth is not square rectangular, the surfaces are not flat, and we need to restore a tooth in three dimensions. The ABC wedge is your solution for that typical problem of that wide open box or that missing cusp.